Welcome to Nellyville. Okay, um, before we get started, if this is your first time here, go ahead and click the big red subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up because I promise you're gonna love it. And while you're at it, go ahead and click the post notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a brand new video. Okay, so let's let's just get right into it. You know, look, today is gonna be a little more of a touchy subject. I know usually around here, around these parts, we like to keep it kind of lighthearted, but there's just kind of something that's on my mind. But before we get into it, let me just say, watch the video in the entirety before you come and drag me in the comment section below or before you come find me on social media, okay? Just at least, at least hear us out. You know what I'm saying? No, but no, seriously, hear me out, watch the video, and then give give your honest opinion. Let's have a discussion, let's open up a dialogue. That's what we're here for, that's what I'm here for, okay? Let's just, we're rambling, let's go on. I don't know if I already said this, but if you read the title, then you may kind of have a general idea of what's going on here. I'm gonna kind of get into some unpopular opinions here, okay? And the main focus of this video is to just check your entitlement, okay? Sometimes what we should be allowed to do and what we think we can do does not align with what you actually can do. That will make more sense as I get deeper into this, okay? I, I really don't wanna bring up any particular situation, but because there is a particular situation that got me into this mindset, I think that I should just probably just lead with that. Okay, I'm just I'm just going off the top of the dome here, so excuse me if I'm rambling. Okay, so we've all, you know, unless you live under a rock, have seen the situation with uh, uh, Cooper versus Cooper, where you have a black man and a white woman in Central Park, and they get into this issue, this altercation over the dog being unleashed. I'm not gonna get really too deep into the details of the situation. You probably already know. If you don't, please go look it up. My question is, and like I said, we're gonna bounce back and forth all over this. My question is, I just wanna know what were the events, what happened that led up to the point of the man, Christian, I believe is his name, to ask Amy to leash the dog. Now, I know what you're gonna say. It's park rules. There are signs that clearly say you cannot let your dog roam around, and that is where she was wrong. You need to follow the rules. If you don't want anybody saying anything to you, and this goes for anything across the board, if you don't want people saying anything to you, because they're probably gonna find a reason anyway, how about just don't give them the ammunition to say anything to you? But I want to know what was it that the dog run up on this man? Did the dog threaten his personal space? Did, you know, what happened to make Christian feel like he wanted to ask this woman or a reminder, hey, you need to leash your dog. My other question is, is how did he approach her? Was it one of those, hey ma'am, sorry to bother you. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw the sign, but I, I think that you're supposed to have your dog leashed. Oh, I don't want you to get in trouble. Or was it one of those, hey, what are you doing? You know you're supposed to have a dog on a leash. You, you know, I, and I'm not placing blame more on either person. I'm just trying to figure out why did it escalate like that? How could it have been handled differently as to avoid a similar situation or a situation that could have ended up a lot worse? Another point I wanna make is we all break some kind of rule sometime or another it does not make it right i'm not excusing this woman this is this is yes this applies to the situation but also just in general we all do something that's kind of rule bendy you have before in your life you probably it's probably something that you do every day or every now and then some rules that we bend and break that we don't even think of and we see other people all the time doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing let me ask you guys, what is it, is there ever a time that you see someone doing something and you know that it's not in compliance with the rules of wherever y'all are, what is, is there ever a time that you feel like, let me approach them and tell them to follow the rules? For, for me, there's not really very many situations where I can see myself being so bold as to approach somebody in this crazy world and tell them, hey, you're breaking the rule. Maybe you want to follow the rules. Unless it is a situation where 
I am in immediate danger. Others are in immediate danger. If it's causing significant discomfort, maybe. In the most humblest kindness of ways, I may say something to that person. But even then, if it's a matter of danger, I'm probably not going to approach the dangerous person that I feel threatened by. I'm probably going to find the proper authority and file a complaint or alert them, even if I have to do it anonymously or, and this may be because I'm a small five foot, 110 pound woman. I take more precautions to avoid confrontation. I'm just trying to visualize in my head what was so serious in that situation that this man had to address and say something to this woman knowing that we live in a day and age where you could have died over it did this woman overreact yeah did she do something that could be considered racist yes do i consider it racist i think that she was very over dramatic i think that the if she felt like the 911 call needed to be made i feel like she could have handled it differently however to just to play both sides of the field here I, I also understand that when you are emotional when you are upset when you got a lot of things on your mind sometimes you do and say things that you may or may not mean or may not be representative of who you are as a person does that make what she did any less wrong or any less racist no i'm just saying we've all have done and said things in the heat of the moment and i think that what bothers me is, is that because we have these smartphones, people's lives are changed and ruined maybe forever. Can smartphones help us? Can the recording of the videos, you know, make a difference in a case or pursuing justice? Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you feel threatening, if you have video footage, that can certainly, you know, that can definitely change the outcome of a, of a scenario when used wisely. I do want to point out that this man, and I have not fact checked this, but this is something that I've seen floating around from reliable sources that the man, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Christian Cooper said that it was not his intention for this woman to lose her job. I kind of find that hard to believe because you recorded this video and I assume that he was the one who uploaded it to his social medias. If that is not true, please correct me. But as far as I know, and let's just look at the whole recording of videos in general, aside from being connected to the dog situation. People record these videos and they upload them online. And a lot of people, let's be honest, are looking for clout and attention and to go viral and to be that person who witnessed something. Most people anymore now who are recording these videos, they don't even stop to think, oh, let me help this person who's in distress. Oh, this video can be used in the court of law. No, no, most people are busting out their phones to record because everybody wants to be an oppressed people. Everybody wants a viral video. Everybody wants their moment. And that's not everyone who up uploads these videos. I think that it, it can be useful to upload a video like that online in the name of justice only after you have exercised all your other rights and other virtues of trying to get there. If the police or the authorities or your job or your school will not listen to you or will not believe your side of the story and you can't get through anywhere, yeah, absolutely upload the video. But I, I think that as a society, we are getting way too comfortable with recording stuff and recording people and putting it online. And now it's not for justice, it's to go viral. And so that's why I'm having a hard time. If this man recorded this woman and her dramatic 911 call, as it was, I'm having a hard time to believe that he uploaded it without the intention of her losing her job and her name being drugged through the mud. If that was not your intention, then what did you upload it for? I mean, did you think that it was funny? Were you trying to raise it? Why, why wouldn't you think? You seem like a very intelligent man. He seems like a very educated man. And maybe he uploaded it in the heat of, of the moment. Maybe it was something that he did. He was angry. He was emotional. He was in his thoughts. And he uploaded without thinking. But how could you How could you not know that this was what was going to happen to this woman? And you have to look at the situation here. This woman has lost her job. She lost her dog. That poor dog. Where is the dog now? I don't know. I'm not bashing him. I'm not bashing her. Honestly, I think that both people were in the wrong. 
She should have been following the rules. If you follow the rules, you don't have people don't have a reason to come at you. People are going. The life is not fair anyway. You most people in one way or another already have a target on them. So don't give people the ammunition to even cause an issue. Because if you follow the rules, do what you're supposed to do. When people do come at you sideways for a claim, oh well, she he they did this, and you can say no. I was doing what I was supposed to do. You don't have a case. But if you are in the wrong, if someone says something to you, as insignificant as it can be, if you were wrong, you were wrong. And it doesn't matter if a person was coming from a place of, of racism or jealousy or, or hate. Follow the rules. Don't give people any more reason than they already have. Because pe some people out here are just looking for a problem. And with that being said, if you have an issue with somebody out in public or at your job or at school and it's not a situation where you feel like you can civilly handle it amongst yourselves, find the proper authorities and mediators, police or whoever and let them do their job and let them deal with it. And sometimes you just got to turn around and walk away. That man did not feel threatened by the dog. Now, I've so heard that the dog was disturbing the wildlife. And I understand that him as a nature man and a bird lover, I live on a nature reserve uh, conservation myself. So I definitely have respect for wildlife. And if the dog was messing up plants and, and flowers and disturbing other wildlife, yeah, I, am, I see that man saying something to, to that woman. But also there has to be proper authorities for that. Why couldn't he record the dog doing all this extra and the woman not having the dog on the leash and then saying, going to the authorities and saying, hey, you know, this is what, you know, this is what I just want you guys to know. There's a woman here. He's got the dog. Da, 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 da. Sometimes it's just not worth taking matters into your into your own hands because you don't know what people are going through. You don't know what's on their mind. You don't know their mental health history you don't know their mental state in that moment so i just don't think it's worth to go to someone and say hey you're not following the rules and then they and then they snap on you you don't know them you don't know and i feel like if that dog apparently the dog was no threat because the man stood there long enough to exchange words with this woman and to record her so the dog was no threat to you. Maybe you were concerned about the wildlife and that's fair. But if that's the case, that's definitely something you could have taken up. I don't know. Do they have park rangers in Central Park? Do they, they have to have some kind of security or something, right? If they don't, let me know. I don't know. I don't live in New York. I've never even been to Central Park. I don't know oh, what. But I'm pretty sure there was somebody he could have contacted. And I would just say, just be careful. When you're driving and people cut you off and they do things and they don't use their blinker, don't make eye contact with people. Sometimes it just doesn't pay to take matters in your own hand because you don't know how people are gonna respond. And I do believe in freedom of speech. I do believe that if someone is bothering you, you know, I do believe, yeah, speak up for yourself, absolutely. Yeah, sometimes you can't wait to get the proper authorities involved. Always absolutely stand up for yourself in a civil way. Sometimes things do get uncivil and that's okay. We're human, sometimes emotions flare up and you get angry and that's okay. Apologize and move on and figure out what y'all can do to make sure that the issue does not arise again. It's it's all about just working with each other and you know, you can't always be kumbaya for sure. But you have to at least try. You can't go out here looking for arguments. Some people are out here just looking for a fight and you have, when you see someone who's doing something that's bothering you and you feel yourself about to approach them, ask yourself, am I doing this because I'm really concerned about what's going to happen if they continue to break this law or are you just feel like oh i want to correct someone today sometimes you just have to walk away and if you talk to someone civilly and say hey there's an issue here can we a b or c to get to a solution what are your thoughts if you approach someone in a civil way to try to resolve an issue in, in any area of your life, whether it be marriage or what or a friendship, co-worker, neighbor, if you address them civilly and they don't respond back to you civilly, they get hostile or defensive in the conversation right then and there. Okay, 
I'm sorry to have, you know, clearly that right now is not a good time. Just wanted to let you know, you know where to find me if you want to discuss it further. Don't want to argue with you and leave it at that. And if they keep following you or harassing you, then, you know, get the law or get someone else involved. You know, I feel like there's a lot more to this particular dog story. And I think it's always multiple sides to every story. And we see these little small clips and we assume the worst or we think that we know and we just don't know. And I think that Christian could have said something to Amy. And if she was hostile, he should have ended it right there. And if she followed him and harassed him, then okay, you want to take your camera out and record. Okay, that that's fine. But... I'm just not convinced that he needed to say anything to her at all. And after he did, if the conversation didn't go in a productive way, I think that it should have just been ended because it really could have gotten ugly. And it and it's sad, it's sad. But I will say, like Will Smith said, racism is not getting worse. It's just being recorded. This has been an issue for a very long time. And I'm not saying that it hasn't got, gotten worse at all. I'm sure it has on some level. But also with a lot of situations beyond racism, a lot of issues have been around for decades. But now there's a light on them because we have cameras and social media and smartphones and you see it constantly. Whereas before maybe it was being buried or it just wasn't so instant. We don't have to wait for newspapers and magazines to run the story. <sighs> I've rambled on enough, had to get that off my chest. Please, the point of this video is to remind everyone to just be safe, follow the rules as, as best as you can. If you have to confront someone, confront them with good intentions. They don't have good intentions in return. Remove yourself from this situation and find somebody to help. Is it all black and white? No. There's a lot of gray area with that. And if you find yourself in a situation where it got beyond a civil point, apologize and figure out how you can keep that from happening again. Hopefully Amy and Christian both learned a lot from this. I hope that we can all learn something from this in situations alike. Everyone is very high stress right now. Everyone breathe, take a breath. And um, that's all I have for you guys today. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. Please leave me a comment in the section below and let me know what you agree with and what you disagree with. Please come find me on all of my other social media. Come back on Sunday for the continued cleaning series. Come back next Wednesday for more Nellyville. Enjoy the rest of your day. Sorry that it was like all like serious or whatever. Um. Okay, sorry. Um. I don't know what to say. Okay, bye.